from the campus of Iowa Western, you're watching your hometown information station, CBTV 17. The Missouri River summer floods destroy Iowa farms last season. After a long winter of restoration, will crops be ready this year? Find out now on Council Bluffs News. Hello and welcome to this week's Council Bluffs News, I'm Rebecca Ray. All over the Midwest, plants spring up sooner than normal, which creates fear of frost. But for farmers along the Missouri River, their troubles lay in the land as sand buries farmer soil. An unwelcome wind blows across these barren fields. Yeah, they call it blow sand. Unwelcome because wind brings sand. And Randy William will tell you, sand brings more work. Every time the wind blows out here, it just goes everywhere. And I wanted to kind of get it tilled in and, and incorporated so it would quit blowing and, and make a little better soil out of it. The 2011 summer floodwaters covered these fields, destroying the crops. Today, most water is gone, but stains on the sides of sheds and blankets of sand remind farmers a good crop season is unlikely. Our crop will be shorter this year because it won't be, you know, I won't get to farm everything because we just won't have time to get it all ready, you know, to get the sand all moved off. Farmers worked all winter to get the land ready for spring, tilling the soil, cleaning debris, working around new ponds, allowing no break for local harvesters. It'll be another month's work to get it ready, I would say. It's still quite wet and it has to dry out underneath. It looks dry on top, but underneath it's quite wet yet. Bob, Randy, and many other farmers along the Missouri River will continue to try and change these Midwest deserts into crops again. Farmers are eternal optimists, I guess, so this year's going to be better. and we. That's all we know, we, we gotta make a living at it or try to anyway. Farmers I spoke with say there are high hopes crops will grow, but the size of the fields may be smaller than in the past. After nine years of open doors, the Union Pacific Railroad Museum closes down. This story and more in Around the Bluffs. You may think he's one of your classmates here at Iowa Western, and it was not long ago Tim Halpern was a college student studying financial planning at Texas Christian University. When I went to my first full-time job interview as a senior in college and uh, it was for financial planning and the guy that interviewed me had the opportunity to be in a band that toured the world and passed up on it and I didn't want to have any regrets. With every cut and every bruise, every storm we didn't choose, I called to stand up and be strong, but together we carry on. Tim is this guy, at age 24, living his dream as a singer and songwriter, born and raised in Omaha. His first big break came in 2011 on the hit television show American Idol. He made it to the top 12 finals and made history on American Idol by becoming the first performer to showcase an original song. I learned a lot about what my strengths are as a performer and some of the areas I could work on as well. And it also just got me prepared uh, to be in front of a lot of people and in front of a lot of eyes and ears. And that was a challenge for sure, but I grew a lot as a performer. That's me. You know, you really, you truly feel it. You know, it's like I could write. This day, Tim shares his dreams and passions with Iowa Western writing students letting them know they can do whatever they want by working hard and not giving up. Reporting for CBTV 17, I'm Kenneth McDaniel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> a new bar in the 100 block hopes to bring a missing vibe to the surrounding bars. We're just hoping to bring a little bit of a different entertainment to the 100 block menu. Rule 11 celebrates their opening with the ribbon cutting and say they are happy to be part of an expanding downtown. It gives us a chance to have uh, other members of the business community come in and say hi and uh, 
it, it's great to see their support. Um, it kind of makes us feel like we're officially uh, a neighbor now. The Union Pacific Railroad Museum closes its doors. We received funding to completely redo our entire first floor exhibits here at the Union Pacific Railroad Museum. Um, so in order for installation and construction to happen, we unfortunately had to close our doors. The funds will bring a new exhibit to Council Bluffs and completely change the inside of the historic UP Museum. Construction, electrical work, painting, all kinds of things that we just don't have the space and for safety concerns, um, visitors just wouldn't be able to view the rest of the museum. The new exhibit, Build in America, will feature the transcontinental railroad system which connects the United States from east to west. There will be so much to see here. Not only are we bringing out an impressive amount of artifacts, there's going to be um, many more interactive exhibits where people can actually um, use their other senses to feel and learn about how the railroad was built. The size of the new exhibit is so large, the Union Pacific Railroad Museum will stay closed until May 12th for its grand reopening. From Council Bluffs Television, I'm Kyle Ashley. The Union Pacific Railroad Museum looks forward to its grand reopening on May 12th. Staff hopes the new exhibit will attract both new and old fans to the museum. Keep it on Channel 17. After the break, CBTV turns into a Margaritaville. What does the future hold for you? I can explore. I can connect. I can live. I can excel. Put yourself in a great place. Iowa Western. Classes are forming now in more than 80 areas of study. Learn more, a lot more at iwcc.edu. I can believe. My sadness and depression grew out of giving myself to my career before I would give myself to myself. And then I am out there speaking in front of thousands of people with a smile pasted on my face but dying on the inside. Hiding sadness makes you more and more sad because it closes you off. Being able to talk about it is so liberating. Giving voice to what you're feeling is part of the healing. Hi, I'm Terry Williams. Can I tell you that it is way past time for us to come face to face with the issue of mental illness in the black community? Time for us to stop hiding it behind closed doors. Share ourselves. Healing starts with us. Did you know that getting up and getting active for just 60 minutes a day is all it takes to help you get stronger, look better, and feel great? Or that fresh fruits and veggies aren't just healthier and crunchier, they can taste better too? Eating better and getting more active is easier than you think. Yeah! Keep watching for some fun and easy ways to discover the magic of healthy living in your life. America, let's get healthy together! <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Council Bluffs News, I'm Rebecca Ray. If you're a Parrothead fan, then you're definitely going to want to tune in for this next interview. Joining me in studio to talk about the Jimmy Buffett pre-party is Carol Horner and Kathy Jordan. Thanks for joining me today, ladies. Thanks for having us. So this is a kind of a new event for the Council Bluffs area. Um, it's the first of the Jimmy Buffett pre-show, pre is that correct? Yeah, and, and Jimmy Buffett hasn't been to the Metro since 1985. So uh, it's been a long time since he's been here. Um, our Parrot Head Club has uh, um, been active now for about 15 years. Uh, so we didn't, we, this is our first experience with, with him in town, which makes us the hosts um, for the other clubs that are coming in, the other Parrot Head Clubs that are coming in, and then also um, just for the community uh, to, to come out and, and party with us. So uh, Friday night is the first official uh, Jimmy Buffett concert pre-party. Uh, at Harris Stir, indoors, uh, not in the Cove. And uh, we will be uh, having a band, Soka Jukebox will be our band, and they are a steel drum band out of uh, Kansas City, I believe it is. And uh, they're a very high energy band. They play a lot of Jimmy Buffett and a lot of other things, and all music is better with a steel drum. Okay, so there's gonna be uh, music and food. What else can Margaritaville lovers find here at this party? <laughs> well. 
You know, Parrot Heads, our tagline is that we party with a purpose. And, uh, and our purpose is uh, to raise some money for Mom's Place. Uh, we're a big fan of that. We do uh, a lot of food drives for them. Um, but this is an opportunity to actually just raise, raise some cold hard cash. And so we're doing a raffle for them, and we're doing that in partnership with the Rotary Club of Council Bluffs, which we are also both members of. Actually, we have a crossover of about five members that are Parrot Heads and also Rotarians. And, and we line up well, actually, although I don't know that all Rotarians would say that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, Rotarians uh, practice service above self. And so as our two service clubs have uh, similar members, we decided to partner on this. They've been. The Rotary Club um, has been interested in doing some uh, some benefits for Mom's Place, and this gave us an avenue to do that. Okay, and along with raising money for Mom's Place, there's, like you said, there's going to be raffles. Talk to me about what kind of prizes people can uh, look we forward to. We have three great prizes for our raffle. Uh, Harrah's and Stir has donated two season passes to the Concert Cove series, so we have those. We have six tickets that were donated by Jason James of Heartland Properties for the REO Speedwack and Sticks and um, Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent, thank you, concert. And then we also, Doll Distributing gave us his Land Shark surfboard, which for all of the parrot heads, this is like Amazing. the coveted thing yeah. that we're all trying to get is the parrot, the surfboard. Well, and these are some pretty awesome prizes. And the, the raffle tickets, they're not actually that expensive. No, no, they're $5 each. Um, and if you can manage to catch one of us before Friday, you can get an extra one with five for twenty dollars so but at, on friday they, they they're just five dollars each um and we draw friday night but you do not need to be present to win um, if you catch a, a rotarian or a parrot head on the street uh, we'll sell you some tickets okay well folks who are lucky enough to go down to see jimmy buffett in concert you know definitely need, need to be out at this party but even yeah. if even if they can't make the concert it's a great way to just kind of mm -hmm. support everything and enjoy it. people uh, who share similar interests you know, Harris has been wonderful to work with. They, uh, you know, they, we sought them out and they kind of sought us out too because, you know, Harris manages the Margaritaville casinos for Jimmy. Um, and so it's, it's kind of like a partner uh, already. So it was real easy to, to, to kind of hook up with them. And they've been absolutely wonderfully accommodating and a really good host for us. We're excited to, to, to get a chance to party there on Friday. And I also want to mention that, you know, if, if folks can't come out to this uh, party, they can always just donate to Mom's Place on absolutely. their own time. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you go um, just uh, Google Mom's Place, um, they have a donation page on their website or, you know, just, uh, you know, go down to their facilities and, and, you know, they've got a thrift store, they've got a, you know, a, a kind of a soup kitchen, if you will. Uh, they feed a, uh, an, uh, a lot of the homeless and near homeless. Um, they feed a lot of children in the summer too, yeah. you know, that, that don't get their meals at school. So they get a chance to, to have a nice, good, hot, warm, home cooked meal um, every day. Uh, so it's a great, it's a great organization and, and Reverend Waller runs a tight ship and we appreciate that. So Definitely. that's why we donate to him. Well, and thank you ladies, you know, for kind of kickstarting this event. You know, it's, it's, hopefully it's going to be a great party for everyone who comes out there. And we I, so again, too. thanks for stopping in the studio. Thanks, thanks for, for having us. us. Once more, the pre-party is Friday the 13th, and if you can't make the party, go ahead, go down to Mom's Place and make a donation. Stay tuned, more Council Bluffs events are up next. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me back. Hey, did you tell your parents about us? Let's skip first period together. Did you get all my texts? Is practice over yet? Where are you at? Are you with your friends? That's L-A-A-A-A-M-M-E-E. -E -E. Capital X, lowercase o, capital X, lowercase o. I love you. JK, I hate you. JK. Are you ignoring me? We're in a huge fight right now. Is this something I did? I can see your lights on. I'm coming this over. What'd you dream about? Did me? I'm lonely. Holla back. Holla back. Let's try something new. Nude pics. Send me some. 
Text me. Welcome back to Council Bluffs News, I'm Rebecca Ray. The Convention and Visitors Bureau shows local business owners attractions in Council Bluffs. A ride-along bus tour brings history to life. Iowa Spirit's James Lathrop catches a ride on the educational tour. Today is the um, Catch Our Spirit tour. It's a bus tour, it's a motor coach tour of all of the attractions in Council Bluffs to show uh, attraction volunteers and frontline personnel at our uh, hotels, as well as some uh, important people in our community, all our attractions. It's one of only three left in the country. It's a rotary style jail cell. These are the people that meet our visitors firsthand. So they're the ones that can really help encourage um, travel and um, you know, disposable income when they come to visit Council Bluffs, what, what might be of interest to go see? That is called the squirrel cage jail and it's not fit for squirrels! <laughs> We've invented Iowa Spirit Council Bluffs as a phrase, as a theme for the Convention and Visitors Bureau because a lot of our community is banded together and had a, a lot of positive feeling and concern and, and hard work uh, last year with the flood. Uh, a lot of people volunteered and helped neighbors that they, they, they didn't know very well or people they didn't know at all and kept our community uh, safe and warm and dry. So that showed a lot of spirit of, of genuine hard work and caring about one another. So we really hope that they can, they can spend a little bit of time in Council Bluffs, see some of the historic sites, visit some of the businesses, eat in the restaurants, those kinds of things. And Council Bluffs is incredibly historic and a lot of our own residents don't realize it and the more that they find out they go, oh my gosh, I didn't know that was here and I didn't know the story behind that. So the more they know and the more the visitors know, the more likely they might be to stay, come back, visit again. So that's our goal. If you would like to see more from Iowa Spirit, check them out on the web or like them on Facebook to see more from the Iowa Spirit staff. And if you're looking for something to do in the area, check out the Convention and Visitors Bureau, located at 149 West Broadway. Thanks for watching this week's Council Bluffs News. Keep your TV on Channel 17 for the Bluffs Sports Zone and replays of Monday Night City Council. Have a comment for the station? Email us at cbtv at iwcc.edu or call us at 712-325-3312. We close this week's show with Iowa Spirit staff Daniel Johnson in Posh Pets Grooming. I've loved animals my whole life and um, I'm very artistic. I get to make them look pretty and I don't have to give them shots or hurt them at all, so it was a good fit. Um, I love cats and dogs, I have my whole life, so it's uh, something I've always wanted to do. Um, I've always been an animal person, dogs and cats and everything, and liked grooming more because I just got to spend more time with the animals and it just fit and it's just, I love it. <laughs> it's really hard to find a place that would allow animals and that was the right space for us and we finally found this place and it's working out perfect so far so we're pretty excited about that. We're both hard workers and we're going for the same goals so it's a good situation. You really have to respect the other person a lot to um, be able to work this close with somebody. So We're like best friends, like sisters, like we're around each other 24-7 so kind of have to get along with each other to spend that much time together. So yeah, we have a real good relationship. <laughs>